Hi guys, Oliver here from Spitfire Audio. Today with a slightly different tutorial, I want to talk about a general topic of how to use samples within our compositions. How to make samples sound natural and realistic. Um, I have uh, three thoughts before I usually, before I start a composition, I'm going to share them with you. And uh, then I have a couple of examples. One is a demo for Spitfire and the other one is a library music piece uh, I've written a little while back. Uh, but I'd like to uh, show you how I've applied uh, my three uh, points there. And uh, it'd be great to know uh, your thoughts and how you use sample to compose and what your general opinion is of uh, making samples sound realistic and including them in your composition. I actually want to use the words um, how to make samples sound authentic rather than realistic. I believe a little bit that uh, realistic is a bit of a dated term because uh, samples really have changed uh, over the past few years. We have libraries now there are they are new instruments. So, for example, Albion 5 or LCO Textures are libraries uh, uh, played by real players but creating a very unique sound that you wouldn't try and recreate. So these are very unique orchestrations, uh, unique playing techniques and uh, recorded in, in very specific places that you just want to use them as you have it under your fingertips and um, just enjoy the creativity and uh, push boundaries within your writing. So how can we include those kind of sounds uh, within our composition? Of course, uh, you know, there is still, if your clients or your, let's say your director still expects a huge orchestral piece uh, and you don't have the budget, uh, I will still tell you some tricks or some thoughts that you have to consider. And the samples nowadays are pretty good to... Um, imitate or kind of to, let's say, replace real players. However, my general point of view, uh, after being a while at Spitfire, is still that always try to include a, a real player wherever you can. Real players um, can make you cry, whereas samples only can make you sad. That's kind of uh, the saying um, I've heard also Christian saying before. So uh, three points. So the first one is uh, you need to know what kind of music or what kind of sound you want to achieve or what is expected from you. Uh, what kind of sound does your director want? Uh, I have a little anecdote here. Um, I was uh, writing music for a short film and I was asked to uh, play some guitar on it, but I'm not a guitarist and that was before my Spitfire times. And I've used the um, uh, Logic guitar, put through some effects on the, on the guitar rig. And uh, we went with it and I just told her, you know, I'm going to record the real guitar once the final cut is there, uh, etc. Recorded my friend uh, with a beautiful guitar, Fender amp and everything and uh, sent it to her as, as the final version. And she was like calling me up and everything's changed. What was happened here? It doesn't sound good anymore. She doesn't like the sound. And I'm sure something like that has happened to you. Uh, I don't want to say here, you know, uh, always use samples, they're better than real players, but it's just, you know, it's always, that's why I want to say it's important that your music is authentic and appropriate. And um, I think you just got to keep that, that in your mind when you start a, a piece of music, you know, what's the purpose of the music and what do you want to um, achieve? So give, having that idea always helps. Number two, if the sounds you use uh, should be realistic, uh, I think it's very important to do a lot of research and uh, know what the instruments can do and what not. Uh, so idiomatic writing for each of those instruments. Even if you do a hybrid co uh, composition, let's say you have some flutes and then you have an electronic beat, you still want it to appear like flutes, so you still got to write idiomatic uh, for them, you know, and, and have them appearing as real flutes. In an orchestral setup, for example, if you have a flute line, you want to... Uh, give the player time to breathe you know if you have a line that goes over one minute then that's not realistic the player could never breathe and um, if you have staccato lines or phrases you want to divide them between uh, different flutes and have the flutes panned differently so it makes it sound like they give each other breaks to breathe and uh, take over the the musical phrases of course again we're in, in the sample world you do have the opportunity to tweak these sounds and for example have a flute um, doubling up a piano 
and it creates a whole new sound. So maybe flute, piano, and guitar, a distorted guitar far in the back, you know, and you create your whole new sound world. And that, I feel, is really the beauty of, um, of the time we live in at the moment, you know. And this brings me to point number three, which is production and uh, dynamics. So if you go for realism, you just got to put these uh, instruments into the right spots in a stereo field. So panning is really important. Um, expression dynamic, which we always emphasize, and uh, then the dynamics and the mix between uh, all the instruments together, you know, knowing how loud do uh, eight violins sound versus a flute versus a horn uh, uh, that plays like maybe softly, you know, just knowing where you have to put them, how much reverb, etc. And, um, you know, create your kind of orchestral setup. Again, with samples, um, you can be as creative as you want, you know. Uh, maybe the director asks for um, uh, heavy drums. I'll show you an example shortly with my library piece, which was uh, heavy drums and kind of lush strings. So uh, I tried to make it as real as possible, but maybe it wouldn't have been possible to have that many drums in the same room and the strings uh, playing really softly and lush and white in the background. So that's kind of mainly possible because I have samples I can create this army of drums and put the strings kind of nicely behind it still wanting to sound the strings as natural and real as possible but the mix as such is my creative invention uh, that I can achieve through sampling uh, if that makes sense uh, one of our biggest release uh, recently has been the studio orchestra I'm a big fan of it because you can exactly do that you can uh, take those libraries and place them wherever you like them because they're recorded at Air Studios uh, One. So they're very dry, crisp, and they just allow you to place them uh, wherever you, you like. And I just want to show you this piece here, which is called New Life. And I focused here on the studio woodwinds. I used some uh, symphonic strings, Eric Whittaker choir here. And then I've created my own piano sound. This is another thing what you can do when you use samples and uh, you want to create your own sound. It's just layering uh, different sample libraries. Because if you just use a piano here, I'm using Oliver Arnold's piano and it has so much character and his reverb has such a trademark that, you know, people would probably hear that it's that piano. But if I layer it, I can uh, make it myself. And I think through that, you can really make your compositions uh, authentic. I've been talking for a while now. Um, I'm going to play you this piece now and then we can talk about uh, what I've mentioned just before in my monologue and uh, then we'll move on to the second piece as well afterwards. And so on. It's a similar thing as the intro. So on this one, I really focused on uh, having this um, uh, woodwind setup. So the woodwind's really close and dry and even tweaking them. So again, like for example, I have some sample delay on here, uh, which opens up my stereo field. It makes it sound it comes out of uh, both speakers, uh, the so-called Haas effect, which I'm a big fan of. Um, and I'm just going to play you all the woodwinds together. 
So again, here I want to achieve a combination of uh, real flutes, but uh, applying some effects. And then I have strings that I wanted to sit um, a bit further back, yet still I'd like to sound for them to sound uh, realistic. So I give them uh, time to breathe there as well. So I want to make it sound human still. Um, I have two flutes here. So the first one playing. Then the bassoon joining. And then I'm um, having here the contrabassoon and the clarinets. And again, if we dive into here, as you can see here, I'm leaving uh, this gap there for the player to breathe and hoping to achieve quite a realistic sound there. Uh, by the way, I'm using the uh, uh, Spitfire Studio Woodwinds Professional. And here, for example, I'm using the close mic. So for most of the woodwinds here, or for all of them, I'm actually only using the close mics. Again, because I wanted to have that really sharp kind of impact. And this is where the library is really strong at, I believe, because it hasn't got its own reverb tail. So they sound a bit more crisp, as mentioned before. And then I have uh, the flute. I find it's really beautiful in the solo parts. Again, first phrase here, leaving a little bit of a gap uh, to breathe. I have the vibrato all the way up to add expression and again, realism. So if you wanna go for the realistic thing, you really gotta uh, use vibrato uh, dynamics and expression. Here, if we check this one out, here I've programmed in uh, dynamics, uh, expression, and even the vibrato here. So if we listen, here is no vibrato. And I'm adding a little bit of external reverb. Again, that's kind of my production for this piece. I have quite a bit of reverb. So I have sh uh, sharp impact uh, right up front and then quite a long lush reverb tail. Even adding some uh, delay here. I'm using the Echo Boy here. Eighth delay all the way up in the mix because I have it on a separate bus around probably 40% feedback. Again, let me just play you the woodwinds for this middle section all, all together. <laughs> Fairly simple there because the strings are taking over, uh, which I'm going to go to now. So let's have a listen to all the strings. Uh, I'm using the symphonic strings. So here is a little bit the opposite. The symphonic strings are all about the lush reverb recorded at Air Studios in, with this uh, beautiful uh, room reverb, a natural tail it has. That's kind of why I decided to do it to have the woodwinds close and the strings sitting really lush in the background, which would be nearly impossible to do um, with a real orchestra because they're two different uh, recorded in two different rooms but I feel like in this composition I've really achieved the sound I wanted an authentic sound and yet still the strings sound all real uh, because I used careful programming big and lush there. Uh, as you can see, I'm using the legato performance here for the celli, for the viola actually as well, and even for the bass. So it has automatically programmed in the transitions from one to the next note. And here in the middle, I'm using... So 
So I'm using a little bit of a special trick here. I love the flautando patches from the Spitfire Symphonic strings, and I'm doubling them up with the long harmonics. So if I just play you a tiny bit. Again, something that's not really possible with a real orchestra, having that amount of players uh, playing flautando and harmonics together. Yet still, it sounds really wonderful and lush and it fits exactly the composition and uh, what I want. I have it doubled up with the long consort. So actually, I'm using three patches here, uh, flautando, consort and harmonics. And they sound together like this. However, the consort's only coming in a little bit later, just to add a bit of strength and oomph. So I'm going to play it from around here. beautiful and lush sounds there. I'm doubling up with the Eric Whittaker choir here. I'll play this to you in a second, but let's just have a listen uh, how this sounds with the violins and the bass as well. Here is on bass pizzicato. I really love the bass pizzicato using the close mic so it doesn't spill too much into the room. And then ensembles, uh, having the whole orchestra, adding the tree mic here to create a depth in the higher register. So that's my string section there. Then I'm using Eric Whittaker choir just to create a lot of depth there, quite a bit of reverb. So we have this uh, evolution grid here. I'm using something special, the patch. So as you can see, I spread it out. So this one is, is the lower, kind of the bass. And then I have up there more kind of alto and soprano voices. And they're just doubling up. It sounds really wonderful. Let's just hear all these uh, kind of flautando, harmonic and choir patch together. just melts so beautifully uh, because it's also all recorded in the same spot and again that's kind of my choice I wanted to create this contrast between the large strings and choir and the really punchy uh, woodwinds up front and then I'm creating just a little soft piano rhythm or phrase and that goes pretty much throughout the whole piece and Again, as I was saying, I'm just layering these sounds so I can achieve my own mix. So I have uh, Oliver's Felt Piano, which is an, an all-time favorite. I think I speak for the whole Spitfire family here. I'm not using the signature reverb here because, I, again, I wanted to create my own sound, but just for you to hear... Really, really wonderful reverb. Um, then I'm doubling up here with a harp. Chrysalis harp. And then Hans Zimmer piano, it has these cool effects here with a brush stroke. Really softly. And that all together just creates this... childlike, very light sound. 
Then right here in the end, I've added something that's called a wavetable, which is from Sound Dust. A very wonderful library. Sounds like this. <laughs> so really cool sounds and if you hear it in context with the rest here we go I have these low woodwinds here I would like to show them to you uh, one more time that just sound really powerful and Really love those punchy sounds right there. So again, here uh, with the wavetable, adding something in, that's kind of a, a hybrid addition there. And yeah, I would, I would like to know your thoughts, whether I've achieved here an authentic and kind of real sound in that sense. Uh, let's move on to my other composition. So this piece I've written for a big library music release. The subject was jungles and the brief was creating busy heavy percussion with uh, slow lush strings. So the instrumentation uh, was clearly given so I've used some Phobos percussion, Hans Zimmer percussion and then uh, for the strings I've used uh, Hans Zimmer strings and Spitfire symphonic strings. So as I was saying the production and the idiomatic writing is really important. So I'm choosing kind of my appropriate microphone setting as well. I think it's very important. My appropriate articulation for the strings just to make my piece appropriate but still keep it as real as possible. So maybe if it was a real life scenario the drums you will hear it, it might be a little bit too big and too uh, overpowering if you had uh, the, these players in the same room yet still I can do that because I'm using samples um, and still convey the feeling that these are real players because I'm trying to write idiomatic um, mix and produce idiomatically as well uh, so let's just have a listen uh, to this piece before I take through the sections So as you can hear, quite a heavy percussion going on there. I was telling you I was using Phobos, in case you're not familiar with this. It's this very unique GUI we've got here. Got loads of tutorials online that I will explain you how this all works uh, with the convolution, etc. I've mainly used presets here, if we listen to this one. Kind of, I love this distance low Tycho that 
that comes in gradually, automation there. I filtered it out, without it would be like this. Suros lights there, bit of a lazy thing there I've done just to, to take these loops, but I've, I thought that sounded quite fantastic to me. Tambourine, creating a bit of a rhythm there, a 16th uh, rhythm. And I'm using here the Hans Zimmer Tycho's. And I'm, again, I'm using this Haas effect where I'm panning one to the left and the other one to the right. Here, if we zoom in closely, I have them slightly apart here. So it creates basically these flans, which makes it sound like there's a whole army of percussionists. Then I'm using some higher percussion there, like the Hans Zimmer buckets. A bit later on, you can hear them better. But then these uh, boobams here. Combos. And I think that's really the trick with creating epic percussion is uh, layering loads of different uh, sounds. If then pans differently. Then as we go towards the climax here, I'm using some more, uh, uh, some busier loops. And I think if you have whole loops recorded as well, that's a whole performance that right there already. That always will add to your realism, as well as playing things in yourself and not quantizing it too much, as I've done here with the Darbuka. Sounds quite cool to my ear. And then to mark the last point there, I'm using an Albion One Easter Island hit, which I absolutely love. They sound super big and epic. Then I'm using some little percussion for the intro here. I'm saying little percussion, but what I actually mean is our Indra Goldfinger uh, percussion series, which uh, has some really quirky and cool sounds. I'm just playing them for you all together. To our Western ear, this sounds like straight out of the jungle. And then let's have a listen to the strings. I'm just going to play them together for you. This is a combination of strings. Again, I really love layering different sounds and uh, creating my unique and authentic sample instruments, basically. So slow and lush was the brief. Using here Hans Zimmer Celli. Using the long stair.
Although I've named them flouts here. Maybe they should be flouts. Let me just have a listen. Turn it up. Oh, yes, that's the one. Beautiful. And then you can hear the consort coming in there of my Svefar Symphonic strings. You can really play uh, with different techniques, like adding them and, and slowly fading them in, which, you know, it makes it kind of hard if you had real players, for example. You can't always all of a sudden just put the mute on. So, like, these kind of options uh, are really made possible through, through the sample world. I, I believe and and it lets us be much more creative and and push boundaries yet still I want to make it sound idiom, uh, idiomatic and and real as well I'm having some harmonic tremolos here Hans Zimmer library Hans Zimmer strings wow listen to this beautiful creating this mystical kind of tension there. Oh, listen to this sound. I'm using consort violins here. A bit of close mic again because that's my lead melody. I want this to sound a little bit closer to our face. And then I have um, chamber strings ensemble here, which I absolutely love. This is uh, one of my favorite libraries. It can be really incredibly detailed and intimate, as well as kind of lush and big if you use the uh, right patches, for example, flautando. But here I'm using uh, the normal longs. And here, again, as I was explaining before, always use uh, the close mics for the bass. Here I'm using tree and ambient as well because I didn't mind uh, if it uh, spells a little bit because it's, it's supposed to be really lush and wide. So I want to really enhance this in my low ends as well. And then I have this beautiful Hans Zimmer string bass. Doubling up. Close mic. And really, really wonderful sounds there to my ears. Um, and then I'm using a bit of woodwinds here right in the beginning. I'm using our woodwind evolutions. Chinese bamboo from uh, the Andy Finton kit bag. So these exotic um, flutes there, really, really beautiful. I'm using the performance pattern uh, patch, excuse me. And then back here, uh, the pan pipe. Doubling up there with the low celli. And then the sine wave, old famous trick, just one octave below your bass, just to make your subwoofer and your studio shake a little bit. And then here I have a drone as well, Phobos drone. And through this, I'm hoping to achieve a authentic 
and appropriate sound for this project, which hopefully also does sound uh, realistic. Cool, that's it from me. I'd be really curious to hear what your approach is when composing with samples. What aspects do you pay attention to? What kind of programming and mixing tricks do you use? Uh, I hope this tutorial was insightful to you and I see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.